I just want to say, you and your sisters look amazing. Oh, my sisters, I love that. Is it intimidating or is it more exciting looking at the blank page and being like, my God, I'm going to be writing a movie about Reagan? <laughs> Great question. Intimidating first. <laughs> As it grew, <clears throat> it became my, my life's work, so I loved it. But I was scared to death when I started. Just scared to death. It's a big story. I lived his time, so I was in college when he was president. So I was very familiar with it. But I think for me, it, it's, it was the story of, as a child, his mother kept saying, there's a purpose in your life. He didn't actually find that purpose until he was 70 years old, until he had been assassinated. Then he knew, the rest of my life is meant to, I'm going to bring down that Berlin Wall. So I, everything in the spine of the story leads to that. So if, it wasn't easy. <laughs> there was a lot. But, but that's the theme. And, and so it wasn't, it wasn't that terribly hard. Intimidating? How intimidating was it to like take on this project? You know, it's interesting. I was John Avelson, who directed Rocky, one of my favorite directors in the world, was originally hired to do it. So Karate Kid, Karate Kid Rocky, my goodness. But when he passed away, the, the baton was handed to me, and I just absolutely loved the story, loved him, and was able to you know jump in there. And I got to work with an old friend, Dennis Quaid, genius actor, and uh, oh my God, that we got to make a movie together. Speaking of genius and like, how much, did, how close did you have to work with Dennis to kind of get the voice of like Ronald Reagan? He has like that certain voice, well, annunciation. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. Um, we had to study all his speeches, the original Ronald Reagan, and we realized that back in the forties, people talked faster and they talked up here in the highest register. And then when he got older and he became the governor, he was uh, down here. And then, well, when he was uh, president, he uh, talked in the lower register. So we studied the speeches. We went to you know YouTube and found the videos. But it's all Dennis. Dennis did the research. He really is a genius actor and did the great research. Young Ron Reagan, you yes. know, and everything. So like the lifeguard stuff. So I got to ask you, did you get more buff? Because you're already buff now. Or did you lean down a little bit? I lost like 15 pounds. So like I, uh, from where I'm at now, I think I lost 15 pounds. Yeah, because he was so skinny. He was a rail, you know. And I, I'm pretty naturally pretty athletic. No, and, dude, and I was pretty, watching you on screen. I was like, dude, he's buff, man. <laughs> pretty, yeah, I'm pre I, I work out and uh, I couldn't. I couldn't lose, I wanted to lose less weight, I just couldn't get it off. Um, but it was a blast working on that, working on the accent, trying to find footage of early Reagan. It was a challenge, but I had a blast. I had a really good time doing it. Here, you get to do like a Russian voice and you're playing a Russian and yeah. everything. You know, so another guy who's a very American guy is Robert Davi. And the two of us play Russians. He plays Brezhnev and I play this spy. How was, how was doing the voice, just putting the voice here, was it simple or you're like, I needed to work on it? And also because like, you're also like narrating kind of the story. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, found, a, I found a great uh, source in, in, in a fellow by the name of Yuri Bezmenov. If you look him up, Yuri Bezmenov, you'll find his story is very interesting. He, he defected from the Soviet Union at a point when he was, became disillusioned. And he wound up here in the States and he tried to tell us what was going on. He tried to tell us what the KGB was doing, that the real battle was not with bullets and guns. The real battle was in psychological warfare. Uh, propaganda works. They worked out a very intricate system that really works. I was so looking forward to seeing your transformation as Nancy Reagan. And so I was wondering for you, because I heard like, you know, Sean had told me that you had immersed yourself. So for you, was like intimidating or were you excited? I was both. I was intimidated for sure because she's such an iconic figure and such a powerhouse and such a force to be reckoned with and everybody knows her and is going to compare me. And then, of course, there was the excitement about uh, the challenge of playing her as an artist. You know, that's what we aspire to do, I think, is I don't want to be typecast and I want to show that I can play different characters, maybe ones that people don't expect me to play. So, of course, I had to delve into an enormous amount of research. I looked at so many videos and interviews and uh, it just was so important to me in the look, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, you know. This is my this is my homage to her in my red dress, her favorite. You look fantastic. Her one shoulder, the ruffles, this is all Nancy. I mean, so for you just sitting in the chair when they're doing probably the wig first to the hairstyle, and then like when they bring the wardrobes out and you're just like putting the wardrobe on. I mean, are you like, yes, I am her? I mean Yeah, it really helps you uh, embody the character when you and it does that with a lot of the characters I've played, but once you're in that 
that, especially her, once I felt like I could somewhat resemble her, you know, of course I initially wanted to capture her essence, but but it, but that definitely made a difference. Once I was kind of in that wig and the makeup and the and wardrobe, I just felt like, okay. And then of course, opposite Dennis, who was such a great Reagan, and he just sat it down. I think the two of us just somehow clicked and hopefully it worked. Yeah, I was wondering like, what your reaction to was, like hearing him do the voice for the first time. Where you're just like, wait, wait, give me a second. Okay, now let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and everyone knows that voice, so it was so important. But we didn't want to do caricatures. We didn't want to do impersonations. So that was important that we kind of made these people human. Even as famous and as iconic that they were, we wanted to find the human side to them, and that was really important.